Alrighty, welcome for those of you who are joining us. We're just giving it a moment more uh, so all of our attendees have a chance to hop on. My name is Elizabeth Allaby. Uh, I work in admissions as an admissions counselor. Just wanted to let you know you're here, you're in the right spot. We're just giving it another couple of moments and then we'll officially kick off this incredible engineering panel that we have for you tonight. All righty, I say let's go for it. So with no further ado, uh, welcome to Engineering Demystified. That's what we're calling it tonight. Uh, we have this excellent selection of uh, panelists for you tonight, um, including several of our engineering faculty. Uh, just in case you missed it, my name's Elizabeth. I work in admissions and just a couple of housekeeping items. This is a webinar format. So if you are not familiar with this, our panelists cannot see you, we can't hear you. Um, but the way that you should definitely take advantage of interacting with us. If you can write in the chat, we'll be monitoring that. You can write in the Q&A. If you have a question for a specific professor, go ahead, throw their name in, um, and we'll make sure that while we're answering both verbally, um, that we take a moment to address your questions. The other thing I wanted to say is since so many of you pre-registered, we have a long list of questions that you pre-submitted. We might not get to all of them, but I wanted to encourage you all to definitely use those chat functions, those Q&A functions. We put this together for you, so make sure that your questions get answered. Uh, Kate, did I forget anything? No, that's it. Um, as we said, feel free to engage in the chat and the Q&A as much as possible. You can send private messages to any one of our faculty. Um, so this is for you. I, we want you to get the most out of it. And um, please, uh, we will keep this going. Um, as long as we can. And one moment uh, before we go ahead and uh, introduce our faculty, I wanted to take a minute to get to know who is out in the audience. So I'm going to try this. We'll see if my polls are still there. I'm going to set out two polls, just asking what year you are in school and maybe what you're interested in studying at MMA. So I clicked launch the polling. You should be able to see it on your screen. Um, Panelists, I think you can answer too if you'd like. <laughs> you are more than welcome. But this is kind of nice for us just to see who's here, who's in our audience, what are you interested most in hearing about? So we can make sure that we get all of that going. So I'll keep this polling going for another 10 seconds. I'll display out the results. So you also might be curious who is in our audience. Um, so it's kind of nice just to see what's going on, where we're at. So I'll give the polling just another five seconds and then I'm going to have to end it. So be sure that you get in your answer. So let's see if I share the results. I think you can see what I can see. It looks like a large chunk of you are juniors. Good for you. You are taking this opportunity to get to know what's even out there. Seniors, don't worry. You might already be accepted or you're still considering Maine Maritime. We are still accepting applications, which Kate and I will talk about for the fall. Um, and this is actually pretty stellar. We have over 50% of you know that you're interested, at least in the marine engineering field. We'll definitely touch on what systems is you might not know yet. Same thing with power. And I love that last answer. 43% of you answered, not sure this is why I'm here. This is why we do nights like this. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so I say let's introduce our incredible panelists. If you would like to start, Laurel, you're kind of first on my little go around. Um, if you don't mind saying who you are, many of you are alumni, so definitely talk about that aspect. Um, how long you've worked at MMA and maybe any other, you know, important work that you've done leading up to your time here as a faculty member. Uh, I'm Professor Christian. I'm a 2011 alumni. Um, I participated in the Marine Engineering operations program and immediately after graduating I worked for Hornback Offshore Services for um, just under five years and then after that I transitioned to a shoreside job at a power plant in Maine, uh, Wyman Station, and worked there for four years and just recently, last, uh, last January, um, took on a new role as a professor here um, teaching uh, engineering classes specifically in STEAM, since that's my specialty, um, coming from um, Wyman Station. And um, yeah, that's pretty much 
that's my story. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Christian. Um, we're going to go on down to Professor Vladkowski next. Good evening and welcome, prospective students, parents. I'm Professor Paul Vladkowski, the chair of the Harold Alphonse School of Engineering at Maine Maritime Academy. I've been teaching at MMA since 2002. Prior to that, I held a number of positions with several companies um, in my last capacity as a, as a um, principal engineer program manager for uh, a company that developed technology for the US Navy. Thank you very much. And one thing you'll notice is how vastly different our professors' experiences have been before they either returned to Maine Maritime or chose them to come here. How about you, Professor Stewart? Uh, hey, well, welcome panelists. I'm Professor Hank Stewart. I graduated a long time ago, back in 1992 from um, Maine Maritime Academy. I was in the MET program and also went through on an NROTC scholarship. Spent the next uh, 22 plus years on active duty in the Navy. Uh, served on a variety of ships, steamships, diesel ships, gas turbine ships, and actually finished my career right where I started um, with the NROTC unit at Maine Maritime Academy. So I've been teaching here in the engineering department ever since. And myself and several of the other faculty members here actually go to sea each summer after the academic year is over on this ship that you see right behind me in the background. So that's our training ship. So happy to talk to you about the programs, about, about marine engineering technology in particular, as well as kind of the neat things we do on cruises and co-ops. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Stewart. I've got Professor Reed next up on my uh, go around. Hi, everyone. I'm Professor Doug Reed. Um, I've been here 13 years uh, at Maine Maritime Academy. My, my specialty is in ship design, naval architecture. Uh, I spent industry experience at Bath Ironworks uh, working on the designs of the, the Zumwalt destroyer and the, uh, the Trimaran version of the littoral combat ship. Um, one cool thing you'll notice about a lot of our instructors here is that there's an above average amount of industry experience um, on the faculty, I would say. So so I wanted to add that. Thank you. I like that addition. Awesome. You all certainly know the things to highlight best. I've got uh, Professor Harmon next up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Joseph Harmon. Uh, I graduated from Maine Maritime Academy in 1986, so the longest of go of all of us. Uh, I shipped out for 28 years um, through the Union, so I've been on every type of ship from dredges to uh, row rows to containers to tankers. Uh, I've been on almost every ship. I've got a chief engineer's license of steam, diesel, uh, and gas turbines, unlimited horsepower. Uh, I worked for two years at the mill in Old Town after I retired. Uh, once the mill closed, I came to Maine Maritime and uh, I absolutely love my job and love uh, sharing my experience uh, with uh, the new students. And I'm also the MEO program coordinator. So it's nice to see everybody wants to be a marine engineer. <laughs> just a little bit biased. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and last up, I have Professor Ali Ferreira. Hi there, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Sadie Alley Ferreira. I am a power engineering technology graduate from 2003. After I graduated, I worked for Chimbro um, where I was a field engineer and went and did power plant construction. I also worked in some paper mill shutdowns uh, during that time. Um, I worked for Verso Paper for five years in maintenance and reliability. So I was a maintenance planner, a maintenance supervisor with my own crew of 16 folks. Um, and then I went on in to be a reliability engineer. Later, I went back to school and then worked part time um, for Sundog Solar, a local solar installation company where I did solar um, some solar sales and design for small residential and uh, commercial applications. And then I came, came back to Maine Maritime Academy. Um, I'm the power engineering technology 
coordinator as well as um, deal with the co-op. So I grade the co-ops and do the co-op coordination for the juniors in the program. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna throw it over to Kate. She'll uh, go ahead and get questions going, but I wanted to mention to all the attendees, if you missed it, uh, we can't see you, we can't hear you, but we do still wanna hear your voice. Use that Q&A feature, use that chat function, ask your questions, we'll be monitoring those. Um, so we might, might turn into a little bit of a chaos. You're gonna hear some answers, you might read some answers, but definitely use that Q&A, that chat. Absolutely. We're um, still trying to get some of our students here. Um, it, we think we had some broken links in there, but we're working on it. Um, and so as we get them onto the Zoom, we will definitely be introducing them as we go. Um, but while I've got all of you guys as professors here, I wanted to pose the first question. Um, and this was one of them that was pre-submitted. And it's a great one to kind of really start off our program with. And it says, I love working with my hands, being on boats, working with machinery, but math and science have never come easy to me in the classroom. What programs would you recommend and how much math and science is involved in our engineering programs? Does anybody wanna take it on first or should I go in circles? Laurel, I see your hand, go for it. <laughs> I think I'm a perfect example. Um, I struggled with math um, in high school. I was good at it, but I was very slow at it. Um, and I really wanted to work offshore and um, do the marine engineering, but I was very nervous about um, the math and science. But I found at MMA, if you ask for help, there is help. There's tons of study sessions and stuff. Whatever you want to do, there's a way to improve upon it. There, There's so much help. And uh, as a suggestion, if you're um, looking into the marine engineering program, the marine engineering operations program is going to be your best bet because it is the hands-on um, equivalent of the marine engineering technology uh, program. And uh, it's a little less math, but it has, and it has a few more um, hands-on classes, uh, machine tool too. Um, you do welding, you, um, you do all the courses in the marine engineering program do um, maintenance on the ship, you really you do get your hands dirty, I promise you that. So I would suggest that. And if you were looking for something that was not going offshore, there's the power engineering program as well. And the, the operations program being the um, least amount of, of math um, involved, but all of them have math. But again, you just, if you need help, there's, there's multiple ways to get through these classes if you are you know, a little weak in that area. Fantastic, thanks, Laurel. Paul, looks like you're up next here, <laughs> adding in as the systems um, side of things. That's great. Oh no, actually, I just wanted to uh, to add to what Professor uh, Christian said, and in, in answer to the student's question, uh, you know, my experience has shown at MMA for those who for those students who sometimes have struggled in various areas, in, in this case, math. Many discover actually that they're actually not that bad and quite proficient at it at MMA. It's often been said that everyone is sort of born to be a natural engineer in some capacity. You think of, uh, you know, from early preschool of, you know, building blocks and, and that. That's, that's human curiosity and interest. And for whatever reason, life takes people in different directions. You know, math is kind of like that too. And we, we've all had different experiences. Sometimes you sit there in class and you wonder, what is this all for? What I can say is MMA is a type of school that really brings it together and makes it relevant. I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, and it, it brings it together in all of our majors too, which is a really nice thing to have. Um, we're specifically focusing on engineering tonight, but um, this, this school really brings it full circle for a lot of our students. So um, did anybody else have anything to add? Hank, go, or Professor Stewart, please go for it. Sure. Um, I, I, th I think Professor Herman probably wants to speak about this too, because it's his program, but um, I, I would agree. Marine engineering operations sounds like a great fit. Um, I would I would say that 
we have lots of theory in the classroom for all of our math, for, for all of our engineering programs. And yet we have a lot of practical applications. A great example that Professor Harmon and I have both taught is Power Equipment Lab, where there's a little bit of theory, typically about 45 minutes of classroom instruction. And then we actually go into a lab and with hands-on practice and hands-on exercises, we actually reinforce all of the math and the concepts. So the students get the theory and then they actually get to see in a real working, uh, hands-on practical way, how you can apply that math. And I think a lot of our students learn very well by applying those concepts that they, that they learned the theory in the classroom and then immediately it's reinforced in a, in a pertinent practical lab, which um, really I think is one of MMA's strengths. I've spoken with a lot of engineering and engineering technology graduates from other institutions, and they had every bit of the math and science that we have, but, but they said they did not have those practical labs backing up uh, so much of the classwork. And including, again, if you look behind me, you see really MMA's greatest lab, the seagoing lab that, that I've been to uh, pretty cool places like Italy and Puerto Rico and Iceland and Spain and France and England, um, many others just over the last few years on this ship. And I know Professor Christian and uh, Harmon have also been, been on uh, lots, of, lots of neat and interesting places on, on this floating laboratory, which is completely operated and maintained by our students under the supervision of licensed officers like Chief Harmon and, and myself. A lot of our faculty go to sea on, on the cruise. So what you're saying is our students get to see the world. They're they, very they, global. <laughs> they, they do. And, and, and honestly, you know, long ago, that's what really attracted me to MMA. I was looking at several, several schools. I had the advantage of the Navy was going to pay for wherever I went to school because I had a scholarship. So it wasn't the money. It was the, no kidding. They, they were offering the best expertise. It was pretty cool to be a 19 year old a uh, student who had just finished my freshman year. And I went to uh, Leningrad, uh, which is, uh, help me out, Paul. Uh, current name of Leningrad. St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg now, Russia, and Copenhagen, Denmark, and Portsmouth, England. Um, that, was, that was phenomenal. And then went back home and got to talk to all of my uh, high school friends. What did, what did you do this summer? Um, well, I went to the beach down in Wells. Okay, I went to the beach in Copenhagen. And I mean, that's an experience that in addition to all of, all of the good professional work you get, it was, so, it was so amazing to see so many places by the time you graduate. Oh, that's a great story. Thank you, Professor Stewart. Professor Harmon, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I think um, um, Professor Christian pretty well covered it in that uh, the MEO program is probably uh, the best bet. Uh, we, we basically have an algebra-based engineering uh, curriculum there in the, in the MEO program. Uh, I myself graduated MEO um, mid-80s. Uh, my first year, I'm, I graduated in April. I made 63 my first year. I, I haven't been under 100 cents. So you're going to do just fine in life with the MEO program. I've, I've worked at sea. I've worked shipyard periods. Uh, I worked for uh, MAN out of Copenhagen, Denmark for six years, uh, flying all around the world, rebuilding diesel engines. And then I made the transition to Shoreside after I retired right to uh, the Mill and Old Town. So you're going to be just fine in any one of our engineering programs. That's, that's a great answer to it. Julia, we see you in the corner. We're going to get to you in one second as our student perspective here. Um, but I wanted to give any of our professors any last moments to talk about um, the hands-on aspect. And if students are questioning their ability in math and science, is this the right program for them? Um, but if... If that um, kind of wraps up that question, I'm going to turn the mic over to Julia here. She's a student in our engineering program. And if you could just say um, what you're studying, where you're from, and why you chose MMA, that would be a great introduction. Hi, um, my name is Julia Malcolm. I'm from Trenton, Maine. Um, I'm a marine systems engineering five-year student. 
um, and I'm a sophomore right now. And I chose MMA because I had looked at so many colleges from all around the country. Um, I looked at a lot of liberal arts. I knew I wanted to do something with science, but I wasn't entirely sure. And one day my dad said, hey, there's a college right in your backyard. And I was like, what? Like Maine, Maine Maritime. And so I went and looked and I was hooked the first day that I went just because I saw the ship. I saw the diesel lab. I saw every hands-on. Um, opportunity and I <laughs> I hadn't even picked up a wrench and I wanted to be an engineer so that's kind of like before coming to MMA I was you know hopeless so I think MMA has really transformed me and I would recommend it to anybody like walking down the street I'd recommend MMA to them so that's great well thank you for that introduction um, we see that there have been some questions coming in through the Q&A in the chat which is fantastic so we're going to be getting to those um, as much as we can but I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to ask the next question to our panelist. I just really like that Julia highlighted it was such a transformative experience. Little known fun fact, we are number two most transformative college in these United States. Sorry, just I couldn't resist, it was too perfect. Um, so the question that I was gonna offer um, was, and it's kind of a big one, so I'm just gonna dive into it because I figured we might as well deal with some kind of bigger questions uh, earlier on. So this was something pre-submitted to us by an attendee earlier. My parents think an engineering major, specifically naval architecture, isn't worth the money anymore. Is this realistic or is this worth it? I'm gonna go with Doug Reed, <laughs> Professor Reed. But definitely Doug. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, with, with who, knows, who knows where that information came from, but um, Naval architecture is frequently rated at the top um, most valuable career, naval architecture marine engineering. Uh, very, very low unemployment rates, like 1%, something like that. Uh, median incomes, six figures, starting salaries, 60 to 70, right up there with any research you would do on, you know, sometimes they don't include naval architecture marine engineering because it's more of a um, unique, I guess, uh, less common uh, major. So if you see if you see a list of you know highly valuable degrees, uh, it's very comparable to mechanical engineering. Uh, I looked at some lists today that, that listed mechanical very highly, and the starting salaries are the same um, or very nearly so. So, you know, I I guess I would disagree with that with that comment. Um, you know, we we very very easily make the you know ninety percent placement. 90 days after graduation in, in really a very large range of, uh, of well-paying jobs in, in, you know, Marine System, I forgot to mention, I'm, <laughs> I'm in, in charge of the Marine System Engineering Program. It's, it's really a marine engineering heavy naval architecture engineering program, uh, like you might see at, at some of the other, there aren't very many schools that teach it actually, very few schools are, offer that, that program. So you'll do very well. Um, with, with, with these degrees and, and Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering is, is in my opinion, definitely worth uh, the investment as far as value for the, for the education. Did anybody else want to add to that? If not, then I sort of have a follow-up to it. I, I guess just one point, uh, in any of our programs, the students are going to get a really broad education. Uh, if you, if you look at the ship behind me, which is very similar to a floating power plant, we have ventilation systems, we have refrigeration systems, electrical distribution systems, uh, backup generators, um, heat exchangers, pumps. So um, automation and control systems, electrical systems. And when you're on a ship at sea, there is literally nobody else to help you if something breaks down or requires maintenance or repair. So our graduates are expected to be proficient in a, in a wide variety of um, equipment and systems. And, and, and really the same is true of a ship or a power plant. So in addition to the naval architecture portion, uh, just the sheer uh, scope of what we do as marine engineers is very broad. And that's what's always interested me. And our typical graduates, um, some of them are happy to spend a career at sea, others will decide they want to work shoreside because ships are cool, but it's it's nice to come home every night. 
So one nice one nice thing about uh, a degree, an engineering degree from Maine Maritime, is you're going to be well suited for a variety of careers ashore. I'm the Marine Engineering Technology Coordinator, and in touch with some of our graduates who are working in power plants ashore, uh, are working in manufacturing facilities ashore, are working as facility managers overseeing maintenance of hospitals, because it's really important for a hospital to have backup electrical power, to have clean air, all the same things that we do on ship. So it really provides you for um, really a variety of careers. A good friend of mine uh, shipped out on deep sea for a number of years after we graduated, but he's from New York City and wanted to spend more time at home. He's now and has been for many years a chief engineer for the Staten Island Ferry Service. He spends all day, uh, the, the ferry terminal's about a mile from his house. So he goes to the terminal and spends all day going back and forth between Staten Island and Manhattan helping commuters. Um, he, he has earned over six figures for many years as a base salary and he works four days a week. So he always has a three day weekend. He's home, he's home uh, three days of the week. So he's been able to do lots of good things with his family. And if he feels like working on a holiday or um, a weekend, they pay him um, at least time and a half, usually double time. So all kinds of opportunities. I think you actually predicted my next question, Professor Stewart. So if anybody else has more to add, um, I saw a question come through the Q&A that was just, which opportunity marine power systems gives you the most options when you graduate? I think it's kind of tough to follow up Professor Stewart. But... Well, the, one that's gonna give, the ones that's gonna give you the most options would be the five-year systems program, because not only are you flexible in that you can uh, take any shoreside engineering job, uh, you also will go through the uh, Coast Guard program. So you'll have a uh, third engineer's Coast Guard license. Uh, you'll be able to match that with a stationary license. So you can work, work stationary uh, plants, uh, as well as you get the design aspects in, in that five-year program. You're going to do co-ops, cadet shipping. Uh, the world is there for the taking if you do the five-year systems program. So it is the most flexible uh, of all of the programs. Thank you. I'm gonna kick it back over to Kate and see what she's got up her sleeve for you. All right, well, I, I guess before I ask the next one, did anybody else wanted to chime in with that flexibility? Um, yeah, go for it. I agree the most options would be the five-year program, but me doing the, I did the Marine Engineering Operations Program, um, and so did also my husband, who also went to Maine Maritime Academy. We both have never been without a job for more than a month when we transition jobs because there's um, the um, reputation of MMA has been so good. There's so many um, MMA alumni that are scattered throughout Maine and New England and the U.S. Basically, they'll hire you just like, oh, you're from Maine Maritime. Yep, come on in. We'll train you up. You know, I've I've had really good experience with that, and so has my husband. And we both did the Marine Engineering Operations Program, which you know, at first it 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 seems limited because it's it's really um, a uh, it's gate it's the lost for words it's basically towards a marine life all the programs are directed towards that um but the companies know that when you are offshore you are accountable for everything in that engine room and so they really respect you as an engineer that you are someone that knows what they're doing when you're in the middle of the ocean you know running an engine room so um i've i've found it it can be a very flexible job in other ways. I also have a lot of friends um, that were in my class that have branched out in different industries. Um, I have a few friends that are in the beer brewing industry because they wanted MMA engineers to work in their factories brewing beer, you know, and uh, they've and they've done really well. So there's tons of different options. I got friends that have worked in with wind turbines. There's there's a lot of different options. So um, just because, you know, it all kind of depends on what you want to do. So they're very flexible. And, and I'm gonna, 
Go for it, Professor Stewart. I don't want to interrupt. I, I would say, regardless of any of our engineering programs, there's, there's lots of employment opportunities. The world in this country need engineers. And as, as COVID wraps up uh, and employment goes back up, uh, it, it is there's going to be for many years, I think, an increasing demand for, for engineers, especially with as broad an education as you get in the MMA. There, there is, I think, a bit of a distinction between the operations, the technology and the systems engineering programs and um, the technology and systems programs are ABED and accredited at, at the engineering technology and the engineering level, um, which, which involves more math and science, uh, ab absolutely. And it, it offers some additional opportunities, especially if somebody is interested in perhaps becoming a, a licensed professional engineer. If, if that is your goal and you're very strong in math and science, I would encourage folks to consider the five-year systems program. The technology programs uh, provide some preparation for that exam, but, but not as much as the systems program. Um, also the technology of the systems programs with the additional math and science can prepare folks if you're thinking about getting an advanced technical degree in the future. So if you, if you think you might wanna get a, a technical master's degree or, or a PhD and get into uh, research or, or education, you, you might find that uh, the technology or the systems programs might be a better fit. But no, no graduate is going to, in my opinion, gonna have trouble finding employment. Mm -hmm. Professor Ferrer, it looks like you've been patiently waiting in the corner. <laughs> You're on mute still. I've been patiently waiting, definitely. Um, I just wanted to be really clear because we've had a lot of good discussion about how folks who get their um, third assistant engineer who ship out MET, MEO, they can get their license when they come shoreside. I just want to point out that it does not work the same way for power engineering technology or power engineering operations. You don't get to also get the license to ship out. That's um, STCW Coast Guard requirements. So I just want to point that out. If you think that you might want to ship out, you really do need to be in one of the marine um, programs. That's a great point. Thank you, Professor Ferrer, um, to make sure that that was included. Professor Wolkowski, if and then we're going to move to the next question. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll be brief, just kind of summarize oh, no, take your time. This, uh, this general question. They're, they're kind of like two approaches in higher education. One is you offer variations of different programs. MMA tends to stick to a tried and true process. Some of our competitors will look at that and brand us as being too limited. But in reality, and this is what I wanna tell everybody in the audience, MMA is preparing you for life. And as such, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find another institution that is gonna give you that type of versatility. Through, as you know, Professor Stewart talked about the floating laboratory to the fact, you know, the ocean itself still largely unexplored and all of the technologies that are still going to spring from, from that medium. I mean, this is, this is our world, and um, there is so much to discover here. And as I said, it, it, it is the best training for, for life. In my years here at MMA, not only have our students gone on and achieved great success in engineering, former students who have gone on to become surgeons, patent lawyers, entrepreneurs of all types. My point is, this is a springboard for success. Well, it was great when you had said, we prepare you for life here at MMA, everybody's head was shaking. So you uh, <laughs> certainly have <laughs> agreement amongst all of us. Um, but I wanted to throw a question and start with Julia actually. Um, so if you wanna unmic yourself for a second. And then I'm going to pass this question on to the rest of you. And I want, you, as um, professors, I want you to think back to when you were deciding um, what to study in college and what avenue to go to. And so, Julie, I'm going to start with you. How did you know engineering was the right path for you? Um, I always knew that I liked math and science, and um, 
it was kind of hard thinking about which college to go to because I do know that a lot of other colleges aren't so technical. Um, and I think it was important to me that if I become an engineer, I also know what it's like to be in the industry because if I'm making decisions for other engineers and I've never been in the industry, I feel like that's not a great thing. So I, I knew that I wanted to be an engineer because I was really interested in um, like math and physics and things like that. But you don't have to be interested in math and physics to be an engineer. It's just what I liked about engineering. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, would any of you guys want to jump in about, go for it, Professor Stewart, in terms of what, <laughs> I see your hand, Professor Ferrer, too. Um, so, so, so I think what always interested me is in the, in the final analysis, engineers are really problem solvers. So all of your engineering training thinks, teaches you how to think critically through a problem. And whether you want to work on a ship or a power plant or in manufacturing or, or pursue many other careers, that ability to kind of look at facts and logically and critically think through a problem holds people in really good stead. And, and I think that's kind of what Dr. Bukowski was getting at with the basis of a, of a good, broad education. Uh, that, that really sets you up for if you decide to do something entirely different later in, later in life. Great, well, thank you. Uh, Professor Ferreira, why don't you take it here? So I'm gonna take you on a little roundabout story because um, that's the best way I think to tell what made me decide to become um, a power engineer. When I was in uh, high school, I wrote a scholarship application to international paper because I wanted to uh, save the environment. That was my big thing. And my dad said, you're never going to get that scholarship uh, because paper companies don't really care about you saving the environment. Um, I didn't get the scholarship, didn't get it. Um, and I got mad and said I was never going to work in a paper mill ever again, or I was never going to work in a paper mill. So I've worked in seven. <laughs> and what's happened even since the 1990s is a shift in that companies are becoming more accountable to the environment. Um, people want to make a difference and that's that's what happens with, with engineering. And I think that right now is a really exciting time to get involved in power. Um, if you pay attention to the news, what happened in Texas with the grid, you know, those are really interesting problems that we really do need to solve. And with renewables coming online, with us trying to decarbonize, there are so many things that students can get involved with to feel good about, um, doing you know positive things for our environment as well as being problem solvers as well as um you know doing design engineering lots of lots of different avenues to take so for me to kind of go around about this story again um i was very interested in making a difference and i think engineers can do that so that's, that's what made me decide to be an engineer. That's a great story. I hadn't heard that one. So thank you for sharing. Um, Professor Christian, up and see your hands up. So <laughs> I'm gonna move to you next. <laughs> um, so when I came to Maine Maritime Academy, I was actually working on lobster boats uh, during my summers. And so I thought I wanted to do the marine transportation program. and. Luckily, after a year of at Maine Maritime Academy, I realized that, oh no, oh no, I want to be in the engine room. I had no desire to be um, up on the bridge. And you get a taste of both sides a little bit when you go on cruise. And it, it was relatively easy to swap over to that program. I think I was just one or two classes behind and was able to catch up. So it's in your first year, it's okay to not know what you're going to do. I mean, being a decky, as we call them, versus an engineer is quite a difference, but um, it, it's, 
it's it's okay to not know what you want to do. It, it it's hard at 18, 19 years old to be like, this is what we're gonna do forever. It it it's okay. So um thankfully you'll you should be able to know what you want to do after about a year, you know, if you're not a hundred percent and it should be a pretty easy change. I started out in ocean studies and quickly changed. So that that's a very good point to make is that Although um, you may be asked to provide a major of interest when you apply, you're not locked into that major by any means. We don't make you do a lot of backpedaling um, to transition. So we'd like you to think about that before you apply, um, but that by no means is locking you into that major for the next four years or five years. So um, did any of anybody else wanted to talk about why they got into engineering and what it was that led them down that path? I can give a quick one that, um, you know, maybe a lot of our uh, guests tonight are from the state of Maine and uh, myself being from the state of Maine, uh, I, I certainly enjoyed working on snowmobiles and uh, I had a hot rod when I was a teenager. Uh, I mean, I did all the things that were uh, mechanical. Uh, so it was just a natural transition for me uh, to move into a, a hands-on engineering type school like Maine Maritime, where uh, I actually, um, like Sadie, going way back now, I started at the University of Maine as a mechanical engineer, and I went there for one year, and I felt like I was trapped in a classroom uh, just hour after hour after hour, no hands-on whatsoever. Uh, I, I'm not going to bash me, uh, you, Maine, because uh, a great school, but uh, a lot of the stuff that they have that's hands-on, you don't get to until you're a grad student. So at Maine Maritime, uh, we put you right into it freshman year. Uh, we start getting people ready uh, for the cruise the next summer. So we're getting uh, um, a lot of lecture and labs that go together uh, so that you can put everything together at the same time instead of uh, pounding away for two or three years with uh, lectures and things like that. Um, we, we have our labs and lectures uh, that go together all the time. Uh, so when I when I transferred from UMaine uh, to Maine Maritime, uh, I just loved it. And, and here going again, uh, my oldest son went to Wentworth in Boston for a year. And again, uh, very few labs, a little tiny lab. The school was small in the middle of Boston. Uh, ag again, a great engineering school, uh, but uh, he actually disliked it. He transferred to Maine Maritime. Uh, he's a junior. He'll be graduating December with a five-year systems degree because he transferred so many credits in uh, that he's going to finish in three and a half years. Uh, he transferred credits in from Wentworth, and uh, he absolutely loves it at Maine Maritime Academy. Thank you. That's awesome. That kind of helps me segue. Um, and I think we've heard about this a little bit regarding the ship, regarding the hands-on nature of our classrooms, but... Um, what else would you say makes Maine Maritime such a fantastic place to study engineering? I want to say better than any other colleges, just like Professor Harmon said. You know, any option you choose isn't going to be bad. But why here? Why us? I see Professor Stewart's ready to go. Yeah, well, it's a, I'm, I'm hoping Julia is going to weigh in, but it but it's a it's a really small school, uh, which which I think brings some strengths. I mean almost 30 years after I graduated, and I'm still in touch and with many of my classmates. I get emails from them. So you, so you really uh, get to know your, your classmates. Uh, you study in small groups. We have very small lab groups. So the instructor to student ratio is great. Um, even, even in classes where we have like a diesel lab that Professor Harmon and I teach, where we might have 24 students, we'll split that into three groups of no more than eight students. So everybody gets a chance to participate. Um, it, I think it, it, it really adds to uh, the value of the class. I think you become connected to uh, your fellow students as well as to the faculty. Everybody knows everybody as opposed to when I was, uh, when I was teaching in the ROTC unit, not only did I teach in casting, but I taught at UMaine. And when you walked across that campus of thousands of people, uh, you didn't really know anybody there outside of your program. Uh, it, it was incredibly, uh, I thought, impersonal, which uh, Maine Maritime, and, and again, because we're so small, if somebody's struggling, it's really easy for them to reach the faculty 
We have a dedicated uh, center for student success. So uh, tutors, tutors are relatively easy to come by. Peer tutors are available. Even faculty members help for folks who are struggling with math or physics. Um, and that kind of gets into some of those earlier conversations we had. But, but I think there's a lot of resources available. Um, it's relatively easy to get a pertinent co-op. Uh, the ship is going to accommodate all of the marine engineers on their, on their freshman and junior cruises, for instance. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping Julia will provide some thoughts and hate to put her on the spot. Professor Stewart, you're reading my mind. <laughs> um, I would love to um, add to that. Yeah, I do think that because we're such a small campus, it makes it so much easier to um, meet new people or meet new people and then become friends with those people. I meet so many people in my daily life that are open to studying with me, um, to showing me the ship. As a freshman, when I walked onto the ship, they were instantly like, oh, you're a freshman? Come look at the engine with me. Like, it, it'll be okay. <laughs> you know, it's your first time on a ship. Don't worry about it. So I do think that learn being an engineer here is unique to every other school because they don't have that those hands-on things. Like, there's so much opportunity. Like, in my first year, I learned how to arc weld. <laughs> I learned, um, I put out an actual fire. You will, if you're in the U.S. Coast Guard, live burn um, for licensed students, you will have to put out a fire. Um, it's just incredible, my journey uh, from just a regular student to becoming an engineer and learning everything about, you know, <laughs> things I never thought I would learn. So I do think it's a very unique experience and you're never going to get the same education anywhere else. So. Like how you said, put out an actual fire, but wait, it was a training fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I say a lot of our students also are part of the casting, the town that made their times located in the casting fire department. So they're definitely putting those skills they're learning to class to good use for our community, which we are very appreciative of. Um, did anybody else want to add? Go for it, Professor Ali Ferreira. Thank you. I wanted to just take a couple minutes to talk about co-ops for the shore side. Um, for the Shoreside program. When I was a student, um, I co-opted at, well, my first co-op wasn't an actual co-op because I didn't have enough credits to actually be a sophomore because of my major change. But I worked for what used to be Bangor Hydro, so up and down the Penobscot River doing uh, maintenance, trash rack maintenance, um, working on the boards and the dams and, and things like that. So that was really interesting. Um, experience. I also worked for Calpine Westbrook, um, which is a two-on-one combined cycle, natural gas-fired uh, power plant. So two um, GE Frame 7 FA gas turbines with two heat recovery steam generators and a steam turbine over 500 megawatts. Um, so I did rounds. I helped the project engineer write safety procedures because they were just getting up and running. Um, and really got to learn so much about combined cycles working there. Um, those aren't experiences that you're going to get everywhere else. My junior year, I worked at a 1150 megawatt power plant in North Carolina for over three months. So two two-on-one combined cycles and several uh, simple cycle gas turbines. I now teach about those in the capstone course and we actually run a simulator where we get to operate up to two on one, bringing it all the way up online. Um, so those are the types of things that you're gonna learn from the ground up from each piece of equipment, how the systems work, and then you're gonna get to go and actually be there and be a part of it before you graduate. Um, so I teach capstone. I also grade the co-ops uh, for the juniors. I think one of the things that you'll see is that the program coordinators are your go-to person. So all of the folks that you see here, myself, Doug, Joe, Hank, and Laurel, uh, professors Stewart, Reed, um, Christian, and Harmon, we're the ones that you're going to ask those questions. Hey, I need help with this. And we all work together to make sure that our engineering students get what they need. So if you're thinking about changing majors, any one of us can help you figure out if it's right for you. 
um, we work pretty well together and we really do have your best interest in mind. So I just wanted to throw it out there. Well, thank you for that. I think yeah. um, we're, we're about 10 minutes to eight. So if any of our attendees have other things that they need to do in the evening, we very much understand, but we're gonna keep this going for a bit longer. Um, it is pretty incredible to have all of us here um, at eight o'clock at night on a school night. I know you guys have lots of uh, grading and <laughs> classwork to do yourselves, um, but we wanna make sure as the attendees get um, all their questions answered. So if you have anything that you wanna ask, please throw it in the Q&A or the chat. Um, but before we get um, too late, I do wanna throw another question back at Julia as our student here. Um, and this was a question that was pre-submitted and I think um, as professors, you guys can jump in too after um, this firsthand uh, student experience. But the question was, what has been the best part so far about Maine Maritime Academy? And what has been the hardest adjustment to life at Maine Maritime Academy? Um, I think um, the, the best thing that has happened to me is definitely my transformation as a person, I think. I've made more friends than I ever have in my life. And that's kind of crazy. I mean, things like the regiment and the Coast Guard classes and everything that you think is hard at the moment, you realize, wow, I just made so many friends and I just learned so much. And when you go to actually, you know, complete a task or you like are looking at your previous assignments, you're like, wow, like I have grown so much like from these experiences. And Obviously, some of the hardest parts were, you know, walking in and <laughs> realizing, you know, you have to wear a uniform and all that stuff. But it's it's so it's actually a really amazing experience because all of you grow so close because of those hard experiences. So if you're afraid to join me maritime or, you know, you're afraid to join the reg or something like that, 100 percent, I would recommend don't be scared. Just dive right in because other people are feeling the same way. So that's how that's, you a, that's a great answer. And we had done one of these panels a few weeks ago all about the regiment and the sentiment was everybody was just so proud of themselves. Um, so that's a great portion to add into this. Um, as the attendees, you may be noticing that our names are changing to our emails. Um, please reach out to us if there's any further questions. We're here for you. Um, we wanna make sure that you got all the information that you need to make the correct decision for yourself. So um, jot these email addresses down um, and we will be in touch, absolutely. Did any of our other panelists wanna talk about the best part so far about MMA or the hardest adjustment? Go for it, Professor Christian. I, I wanted to mention, I saw a question about how uh, life is like in the regiment, what's the regiment like? And uh, again, I graduated in 2011, so I'm a little, I, I remember the regiment very well. Uh, and I will say it's not necessarily easy, but it's not necessarily extremely hard. You get used to it. Um, but I definitely think it made me a better person. And I think the best part about the regiment is the camaraderie. I mean, those guys that were in my group, my alpha company, I know those guys. I'm Facebook friends with them. It's been 10 years. I know them all. We, we all shipped out together. And I mean, if I, if I see them in the airport because I'm traveling, not that I'm doing it now, but like years before, um, you know, you're like, hey, how's it going? You might, it's just, you're so close with that group. You bond over, um, you know, some of the tough things you have to do in the regiment. But um, all in all, it's, it's almost an inconvenience you get, but, and you get used to it, but it, it preps you to, um, to be accountable for yourself, which is mandatory when you're on a ship. You can't just, you know, not show up for work you know they make you you know show up every morning at i think 7 10 in the morning and you gotta have a inspection of your um uniform but it's the one nice thing is you don't have to buy a lot of clothes you have your uniforms and for four years you just wear those um so that's kind of nice uh i wouldn't make that a go or no go decision um because i think the regiment is it's actually has more prawns, pros than cons um, to it because it just, the friendships you build and the, the things it does for you. Even if you do a non-regimented program, um, it looks great on a resume and it really just, um, it, it helps you succeed 
uh, later in life. So I definitely uh, would say it's not it's not that bad. Definitely uh, sign up for it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, it's it's an important part to add in that regimental portion. Um, and thank you for that description, Professor Stewart. Hi. I agree with everything that's been said before. When, when I started as a student, I remember going into the engine room for the first time as a freshman and looking at all of the wiring and the piping and all the components and thinking that I would actually never understand what was happening in there. And amazingly, um, as a result of all of the classes and uh, all of the time we spent on cruise, by the end of um, my junior cruise, I felt completely comfortable that I understood what was going on there, knew, knew how to manage the chaos. And, and, and it is, I mean, it's hard work getting through all of the Coast Guard requirements, all the licensing requirements. And I think it really does bring you, uh, I think everybody here who's a, as an alumni would tell you, or a student would tell you that uh, they're very close to their classmates. And even you know, 10, 20, 30 years afterwards, we're all still still close. You, you really do bond with your classmates. Uh, that hard work pays off and it. It really builds a confidence. You learn how to work well with people when, you, when you're in a confined space like a ship for, for weeks, you learn how to get along with people. You, you have to. Uh, there's, there's no room for people who can't um, work with others at sea. Everybody's kind of pulling together to, to make that ship operate, to make that plant go. And, and I thought that was uh, one of the most challenging things and yet turned out to be one of the best things about an MMA experience. Sure, that that skill set, getting along with everybody has carried you very far into life here. Um, well, well and, and again, the regiment does expect folks to get up every morning and be in formation and, and that adds value after you graduate. Employers kind of value somebody who who can be where they're supposed to be on, on time that are reliable. I think if you talk to anybody with experience in industry, that's that's not as common as you think it would be. You know, people to, to be competent and be where they're supposed to be and be ready to go on time. No, no nonsense, just ready to do the job. And that's, I, I think that's what our graduates have uh, rightfully earned a, earned a rep reputation for being able to do. Absolutely, well, thank you guys. Um, is there anything else that any of you panelists wanted to say, Professor Reed, I see you um, before we, wrap up and it looks like all of us have put our emails out there. So again, please be in touch with us. That's what we're here for. We want to make sure that um, your questions are answered. Parents too, please feel free to reach out because um, you're making this decision as well as your students. So um, Professor Reed, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Um, there's been a, quite a few questions about prep for math and science in the chat and the Q&A there. And I just wanted to say say one thing that I, I give this advice a lot in in this setting, um, do the most challenging thing you can do, right? If you're if you're getting a four or five on the AP calculus test, do MSE, <laughs> right? Do challenge yourself. Do do the most rigorous thing. Um, you know, is MSE the hardest? Well, that depends on the person. It's the most mathematically rigorous uh, program. And I just always like to tell people that, you know, I'm seeing questions here about well, what should I what should I take as a senior and, and how much math is there? Well, we have something for everybody here, but, but my, my advice is to challenge yourself and, and do the most difficult thing you can do. That's, we, we also say that in the admissions department too. So you're gonna get that advice from all of us when you start talking to us about which major to choose. Um, so I do wanna mention that um, we will have open house. So if some of your questions didn't get answered tonight, open house is April 3rd, um, the first Saturday in April. So it's another chance to touch base with us in this live format, but this was an idea of our engineering department. So um, many thanks to you guys for putting this together. Um, did anybody else, it looked like, Julia, you might've had your hand raised or no. Anybody else wanted to chime in here before we sign out last words of advice um, for our students that are trying to make this hard decision? Professor Harmon? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, uh, you can't go wrong if you go to Maine Maritime in any of our programs. And like you said, um, whatever program they fit into best, we will uh, place them uh, strategically to, to meet uh, whatever their aptitude is and 
whatever classes they had in high school, there's a fit for you at Maine Maritime. That's, That's true. Really good point. Fit for you. I do. I have advice. <laughs> so coming at this from the admissions side, so definitely be in touch with Kate and I. We will be with you every step of the way. We're real people, I promise. Uh, we're happy to help you out. And the other thing I wanted to say, this is especially important for everybody who's an underclassman, junior and on down. Um, we are looking to continue to be test optional for those SAT, ACT tests going into the next year. If you're able to take those tests and you want to, definitely do. You can always submit those scores, but not submitting those scores is not going to, you know, negatively impact you in any way. Um, the other thing I was going to say is just be in touch with Kate and I. We are excellent points of contact. And if you're like, oh, there was that one really great systems engineer, uh, help me figure out which one, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we get you to the right person. That's all that I had. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Um, we can stay on this another handful of minutes. Uh, but other than that, I know that it is a school night for all of us involved. I know some of you will have school to go into whether or not you're in person. Um, I know all of our professors have quite a bit to work out whether they're teaching in person or online. Um, for the most part, I think you all are pretty in person. But, well, well awesome. thank you guys all. And have a good night. Have and fun. we'll talk soon. See you. Good night. <laughs>